My name is Ariel, and I'm from Meknes, Morocco, and I currently study uh, ASI in Ifran. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my presentation about the similarities between Moroccan Palestinian weddings. My, so my question is, what are similarities between the Palestinian and Moroccan weddings? Um, I, I'm not an expert, but I promise that I tried to learn as much as I could to satisfy my curiosity about this topic. Someone here might know more than me about this topic. So please correct me, ask any questions and contribute, but do it nicely. I am not trying to persuade you of my agenda, but convince you to take action. My only hope is that my presentation might cultivate your own dreams. So this is my outline. I'm going to start with an um, introduction, talking about the, like, a brief summary about the importance of weddings in rock and Palestinian culture. I'm going to later move on to the ceremonial practices, such as the Hermanus, henna ceremony, um, the bridal dress, the joyous festivities, and the food that is present. What led me to this? As I was scrolling through TikTok, I saw a video about the Palestinian Zaruta, and I was really intrigued because I thought it was something that was only banned at home in Morocco. So this sparked the idea of searching and going deep about these two cultures and learning more about their similarities. Uh, the similarities between Palestinian and Moroccan weddings go beyond than the ceremonial practices. Um, they emphasize love, unity, food, and tradition. It's a great way to preserve, preserve your ancestors' traditions and what they did a long time ago. And for the case of Palestine, it's a way to show the resistance and the heritage. The harem, henna ceremonies. So this first slide talks about the henna ceremonies in Morocco. So it's a church tradition that combines culture and unity, and it's a chance for the bride to relax and to stay with her family relatives before her big day. In this slide, to the left, you can see a woman getting her henna done um, in Marrakesh in the 19, what seems to be the 1970s. And to the right, it's, uh, there's a henna ceremony, but in fast, as you can see from the embroidery and the intricate design. The next slide talks about Palestine. So as you can see, the henna is way more detailed in Palestine than it is in Morocco. And in Palestine, it's the family, relatives, or like any female relative that, that, that does the henna for the bride. But in Morocco, like you hire a professional henna artist to do your henna. Now we're going to talk about the wedding dresses and embroidery found in both cultures. To the left, you can see a Palestinian wedding dress from the early 1900s in Bethlehem. And to the right, you could see a bridal dress from Tetuan called the Tetuania. One thing that I saw, I noticed, is that the Palestinian dope has more vivid colors. And their embroidery includes nature, flowers, and like animals, while the Moroccan um, dress or embroidery is often only for like geometric designs only for geometric designs for the dress festivities what led me to this presentation was the zahruts so today i'm going to show you uh the both zahruts that are found in morocco and in palestine the first video is the moroccan one Um, and the second video is the Palestinian Zaruta. This is it for this slide, and now we're going to go to the meaning behind the two. 
So as you can see, the Moroccan Zahadruta is more religious than the Palestinian Zahadruta. From the lyrics, the Palestinian chant um, focuses more on the bride and her beauty and the importance of that day, while the Moroccan Zahadruta has Islamic components and focuses on the more religious side of weddings and the purpose. For the traditional dances and the music, music and dance are essential to any joy celebration, and Palestine and Morocco are no exception. These performances are not only there to entertain the people, but it's a way to express happiness and to ex like express their culture. And it's also a chance for all guests to kind of get together and have a fun time. To the left, you're going to see um, the Palestinian dance, a uh, traditional one called the Dabka. And to the, le to the right, you're going to see um, Rock and Murgedo. Now, moving on to the fruit, food holds a special place in both cultures and weddings are an opportunity to share that food with people and to share their recipes that were passed down from generation to generation. Generation, And today I'm going to be talking about the Moroccan delicacies and what is served there. Now, I want you to remember that this is not the only food that's going to be served in a wedding. And food also differs from which region you are, whether you're in Palestine or in Morocco. One uh, famous dessert that is served in Morocco is called hensha, which you can see to the left. You can think of hensha as uh, as a Moroccan bakhnawa because it's shaped like a snake, which comes from the word hench in Darija, which is the Arabic dialect that's in Morocco, which means snake. And to the to the right, you can see sifla, which is uh, vermicelli, with, which is called cherry, or what we call it in Morocco, topped with cinnamon and sugar. Moving on to Palestinian food, um, to the left, you can see sahan, which I believe is the national dish of Palestine. And to the right, yeah, you can see the knafer, which is a delicious dessert that's sold from all throughout Palestine, but it's more most famous in the in Nablus. Here are my references if you would like to de dive deep into these cultures and if you want to learn more about similarities between these two cultures. And yeah, thank you. <laughs>